The Roz and Mocha Show. Kiss 92.5. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back to Kiss 92.5, back to Toronto. Yeah. Please make some noise for the one and only <laughs> Avril Lavigne. Good morning. Thank Good morning, you. Avril. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? Doing great. When was the last time you woke up this early? I was just telling you at the, the Today Show a couple weeks ago in New York. Yeah. We got, we got about three hours. To this morning, I woke up at 4.45. Oh, wow. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Does that affect... Your day when, or I guess your plans for the whole night when you know that you have like a day full of press, do it's, you try to make it so that you go to bed early the night before? I did. I went like, to bed at 10 o'clock <laughs> and I never go to bed at 10 p.m. I was like, okay, go to bed early. And then I woke up at 1.30 in the morning. I was going to say. And I was up from 1.30 to about 3.30. And yeah. then I set my alarm for 4.45 so I feel like super jet lagged right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we were just talking about before we came on air but yeah. you and I are both like night people nocturnal so if yeah. you try and go to bed at like 10 it literally you're not it gonna, feels yeah. weird yeah it's a different it's, world right when, now like when I'm in the studio <laughs> yeah. we're in the studio writing till like 4 in the morning right. and I go in at noon so I work I, I come alive at night I'm a night mm-hmm. owl so and then what do you do like with all that time like when uh, do you when you leave that studio yeah. and you're done working like a 12 hour day. It's right to bed pretty much. Is it really? Yeah. yeah because we, we're in the studio from like for like 12 hours, 14 hours sometimes. Yeah. So by the time you get out, you're really just like tired, especially just when you're writing and singing and playing music over and over. And it's such an exciting process and I give so much to it. So definitely it's when you're in the studio, you live in the studio. Yeah. And when you are in that mode, that work mode, especially working on an album. Do you find when you leave the studio mentally, you don't really leave the studio because you're constantly thinking about... Yeah, it's... You do you second live, guess yourself? eat, sleep, breathe music. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's what I love about it. And, and how's the new album coming along? You haven't released a name for the record yet. I know. I know we're I'm trying to... That's that. everything well, on Twitter right now. Well, the single series to yeah. never growing up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm going to put the record out in September. And... The video for the, have you seen the video for this no, song? Not yet. Oh, it's so much fun, dude! It's at prom. Yeah, but I do a throwback and I dress up with the necktie. I dress in the same oh, outfit nice. as I did in my complicated mm-hmm, music yeah. video, and I made my hair really straight. And I look the same. It just looked it, like it'd be a lot I of have fun. A ska- to I have do. a skateboard yeah. and I cruise down the hallway in the dude, school. The video just looked like it was a huge party. Like it looked like a, yeah. it was a lot of fun <laughs> to be a part of. Uh, when you look back at those days, to those days of Skater Boy, complicated, mm-hmm. and you look at your life now and how. Things have evolved. <laughs> Do you think back and like, and just, are you amazed? That was 11 years ago, mm-hmm. first right? of all, which yeah. is crazy. So I've been doing this for a decade now. And I'm 28. Um, I was 17 when Complicated came out. Mm-hmm. And I've pretty much just been on tour the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Every record I've put out, I've done a world tour. And I've my first three records, I spent two years on the road just promoting and touring and so I'm going to have a tour for this record, too. And the fans have been incredible, and they've been really patient waiting for new music. Yeah. And I can't wait to, to get out there and, and put on some shows and for them to hear the whole record. When you look through your Twitter feed, at Avril Lavigne, or you meet your fans on the street, mm-hmm. uh, what's the most common question you get from them? What do they want to know from you? <laughs> um, if they can have a picture. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, anything else? Like, do they ask um, you questions about previous songs or uh, the meaning behind an album or the meaning behind a particular single? I have I get a lot of feedback from different songs. Sometimes yeah. my fans will tell me what song meant a lot to them or if it helped them at, at some point in their life. And it, that's always really rewarding for me to hear. Yeah. What's the one song that you think people identify the most with? There's a lot of different ones. A lot of the album tracks yeah. are what the fans come to me mm-hmm. and say like this song meant this to me or it helped me get through a hard time and like the fans that are like listening to the entire record over and over so the songs that aren't the singles they get like really into uh what's your favorite part about touring when you are on a world tour like, Do you have something a, a special <laughs> moment that you always look forward to when you know you're going to be hitting the road it's like my last tour the black star tour was the best tour i'd ever done And it was because I had more material, more records. Like, this is going to be my fifth album. So when you think about all the singles I've had over the years, that makes up pretty much my entire set list. (laughs) I remember my first tour, I didn't have very many songs to choose from. And now, like, the whole thing's singles, and it's I'm more confident. 
confident and comfortable on stage and I just go out there and have as much fun as I can and make sure that everyone in the room is having the best time possible. Do you have one song that when you are performing for, uh, you know, on a stage worldwide, is there one song that every single time you hit the stage, no matter what city you're in, you're like, man, I cannot wait for the fans to start singing along with me to this one particular song. Girlfriend's pretty good for yeah. that because yeah. I put the microphone out for the hey, hey, you, you part and yeah. the crowd all screams it. Yeah. And like when I sing I'm with you, I have the crowd sing sing the, the bridge along with me and that's really moving. So... You can see it. You're getting excited just talking about it right now. Your eyes just lit up when you're talking about it. Uh, Let's talk about this album being special for, obviously, the romantic reason as well. Um, Is that going to have an effect on what we're hearing from the actual uh, record that you're going to put out? Well, we started out with Chad and I um, Mm -hmm. wrote some tunes on this record. And the the first song we wrote together, with along with David Hodges, um, it's called Let Me Go. And it's a duet Mm -hmm. that we have. So I think at some point... Later on in the album cycle, we'll, we'll release that. Yeah. Definitely here in Canada. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you find uh, more difficult or, I guess, challenging? Writing the music for the album, <laughs> selecting what songs to actually put on the album, or uh, planning a wedding? Um, well, I'm doing it all, all together, yeah. all at once. When do you um, have the time to do yeah. all of this? <laughs> I just, you know, make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a lot going on, especially with the new single and, and shooting music videos and, yeah. and all that. Uh, What is the one thing that you're most excited for the fans to hear when it comes to this album? It's diverse. I have a song called Bad Girl and Marilyn Manson sings on it. Nice. I have a song that I wrote called Hello Kitty because I'm (laughs) I'm obsessed with Hello Kitty. (laughs) And it's got like a glitchy electronic feel to it. It's totally different than anything I've done. And and yeah, like the album's just all over the place. There's ballads, piano ballads, duet, a duet with Chad, and then more songs like the first single. Uh, is there anything that that's going to be on this new album that people are going to be shocked to hear? Not like content-wise, but just the sound, because people are used to I think different sounds coming from you and from every album that you put most out. Most people are probably used to like hearing me do the whole boy bashing, yeah. like <laughs> writing about guys and stuff. And the cool thing that's about this album is that I talk about a bunch of different stuff and different subjects outside of just love. Like I have a song called 17, so it's nostalgic. Nice. Here's to Never Growing Up is nostalgic. Um, Hello Kitty. I have a song called Rock and Roll. It's just about the lifestyle and, and that attitude. Yeah. And so I didn't want to just make a record all about relationship, relationship, love, love, love. There are those songs on this record. Yeah. But I kind of lyrically kind of went somewhere else and just talking about other stuff. Yeah. Do you have uh, that one song or a handful of songs? I've heard that some artists will have songs that they hang on to that they don't put out yeah. just yet, but they have it in the, the back of their mind. They're like, the time's not right. The time's not right. But when the time is right, I'm going to release this record. Do you have that one song or group think, of songs? Like, I wrote a ton of songs for this record. In fact, I've got two albums worth of music. Right. And I just wanted to make sure that I did the best job I could with with the music and the song choices. And um, a song that won't be going on the record that I will plan on releasing one day is a second duet Chad and I have together. Oh, nice. And it's a love song. And... Like, I wasn't going to put two, two duets <laughs> yeah. with them on the record, but, like, we couldn't help it. Like, we were, like, living in the studio, and, like, we, we wrote I Wanted Him on this one song, and so it's probably going to be our song at the wedding. Nice. Yeah. Before we wrap things up, Avril Lavigne, your fans are going nuts on uh, Twitter right now, at Kiss925Toronto, uh, and especially just around the city. What's that one thing that you want to say to them? Even people who are listening worldwide at Kiss925.com. I just want to say thanks to all my fans for being supportive over the years in Canada, and thank you guys for playing my song. And anytime I hear it on the radio, it's it feels so good. It's so awesome because you know I've put so much into writing and recording and touring, and it feels really great to be releasing new music. So thank you, Avril Levine. Always a pleasure having mm-hmm. you in here. Anytime you're in Toronto, please visit us. On okay, the I would show. love to. Thank <laughs> you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Avril and Mocha Show. Kiss 925. The Roz and Mocha Show. Kiss 925.